Hi everybody, Heidi Clark here. I'm actually going to share with you a class that I taught recently about autism. And my goal in this class is really just to give you some practical oils to use, not only for the person who has autism, but everyone in the household. They're going to actually work for um, the person who doesn't have autism in many of the same ways. We're also going to talk a lot about transitioning. This is a really key issue for autism and what oils are going to be great for that. So let's just get started. I'm going to hit on uh, these 14 basic oils. The very first one, or let me just give you a list. The list is going to be frankincense, sandalwood, both Hawaiian and regular, which is um, regular we would consider Indian uh, sandalwood, cedarwood, vetiver, thyme, lavender, Roman chamomile, bergamot, melissa, wild orange, Ylang Ylang, Balance, and Serenity. So I've actually got 12 uh, single oils and two blends. And there were many, many more oils that I could add to this list. It was so hard to get it down to this small list. But let's go ahead and get going on these. <clears throat> the first thing I want to talk about is I like to group oils into their plant types. So Trees are really an amazing oil. They ground you. Think of a big, tall tree, and it's actually taking a lot of abuse from the weather, maybe a big storm, or maybe a horde of insects are coming and attacking it. It's got to go through a lot in its life. And so it needs to be rooted deeply and grounded, even in a big storm. So any tree oil is going to be really great for somebody with autism. And we're going to start with frankincense. Frankincense actually is very very regenerative, very cellular regenerative. It has these great uh, chemist, this great chemistry, these great properties that are really going to be calming for um, somebody who's stressing and making just even a transition from getting into the car, going from one place to another, or maybe transitioning from what I was doing a minute ago and heading for bed. This also would work for small children who are maybe just you're trying to get them to go into to bed at night. They don't even have to have autism. Um, this is great for an adult who um, just is transitioning at work. Maybe um, you just want to, sh you're shifting into something, the boss just gave you something that you're not uh, really wanting to take on and you're going to have to just say it's okay I can weather this storm I can do this so whether you have autism or not frankincense is this amazing oil that you're going to want to use you're going to want to put it in a diffuser diffuser and run it um, throughout the day you can actually make it in a rollerball doTERRA sells it in a rollerball a touch form which is really great uh, for younger children it's diluted a little bit um, you can smell it right out of the bottle both in the 15 mil or even the rollerball. I do that a lot. If you're going to use a rollerball, a sweet spot is to roll it just on the back of your neck, right at the base of your skull. There's something about this spot or inhaling it that really gets into your limbic system. And so that's going to really help with a lot of your emotional uh, management. And some other great oils are uh, sandalwood. Sandalwood both, everybody's a little confused about sandalwood. Like, what's the difference between sandalwood and Hawaiian sandalwood? If you actually look them up, they're very similar. They have a lot of the same similar um, properties. So chemistry-wise, they're actually pretty similar, not exactly. Um, and property-wise, they're very similar. So I, they're pretty interchangeable. And somebody might argue with me on that point, but it's really about what you're trying to um, get done, what you're trying to get accomplished. So if you want something that's going to be very calming and regenerative, if you want something that's going to really help with optimal brain repair and function, then using a tree like sandalwood is really going to help at that cellular level. It's going to give your body what it needs to heal itself. These are the great tools. Sandalwood, both of the sandalwoods and the frankincense, both tree oils. Another great tree oil is um, cedarwood. Cedarwood is one of the least expensive oils that we have. It's uh, very uh, inexpensive. It's actually um, 12 cents per drop. I like to talk about a per drop price. It comes in a 15 mil bottle. It has that same uh, kind of tree sort of smell. A lot of people who don't like lavender for relaxation will go to go to cedarwood. It's really great in a diffuser, especially in the evening. It's calming. But yet, it actually will stimulate some brain activity. So the person with autism who actually needs maybe some kind of stimulation there will, will get that through 
a gentle version of uh, cedarwood. Not stimulation like making them hyper, but you want metabolic process stimulation. You want the brain to be functioning in a normal way. You want it to be functioning in a healthy way. And so cedarwood can actually help with that. It's very protective to the brain as well, which is something that you really want, whether you have autism or not. Great for young kids. Again, you can um, put it in a... Um, a diffuser or a rollerball. It doesn't come in a rollerball at doTERRA, but you could easily slip it into a rollerball and maybe do a one to 10 for a 10% or a, a one to five drop uh, variation in your own rollerball. That would be great for a young child. Um, you can use it topically. You don't want to swallow uh, cedarwood. There's just certain things that shouldn't be in your stomach, although you can swallow um, or take internally frankincense and both of the sandalwoods. Another great oil is vetiver. Now, vetiver is technically not a tree. It is a root, um, but it still has that kind of grounding thing. It's very great emotionally, very calming. Um, so when you have somebody who's stressing with transition and uh, can't maybe just move from one thing to the other because their brain just won't let them do that, then oils like these tree oils and vetiver as a root oil can really, really assist with that. Vetiver is actually really well known in the world of getting a good night's rest as well. And so it can be very helpful with restful sleep and stress. It's great for self-awareness work. If you look into the emotional properties of oils, I highly suggest you get a book that really helps you um, with that. Vetiver can really work with self-awareness work. So in other words, when you're struggling thinking about what, where I am in the situation with other people in the room, which is something that autistic people struggle with. They, they're, they can be very focused on themselves and it's hard for them to get outside of what's happening to them, to the person next to them. And so Vetiver can assist with that. So maybe during a playtime um, with a young autistic child, you can put a combination of frankincense and vetiver in the diffuser and run that in the room during a playtime and they might open up a little bit more and be a little more aware of how they're interacting with the other kids. And while, while still dealing with the transition of maybe what that other child wants them to do. So it will assist in that. It's a great oil for those kinds of things. Thyme, thyme is a great oil. Of course, it's an herb. And thyme is really one of the most powerful cleansers that we have. So now we're kind of getting to the idea of when you, whether you have autism or not, we need to keep our bodies healthy. We want to live a healthy lifestyle. We want our cleansing organs to function well. We want our metabolic processes to be moving the things out that are not healthy for us, that clog things up. We want our DNA and our cells to be doing that turnover that's healthy. And oils that cleanse, like thyme, can be really helpful with that. And emotionally, thyme actually can also help you cleanse out um, difficult emotions, if you think about it like that. When some, when an oil helps you physically, it can actually help you emotionally in many of the same ways. Um, time actually will assist with tolerance and patience. So if you're talking about somebody with autism, boy, they can really struggle with that. If they're trying to transition, if you're asking them to do something that they don't want to do, and they're highly focused on what they're doing, it can be really difficult. They may not be patient with you. They may not be tolerant of what you're asking them to do. They may not be patient and tolerant with the situation that they're in at the moment. And so just inhaling time can be really, really powerful for that. Um, it actually is a hot oil. It's one that you're going to want to dilute if you're going to use it topically. You can take it internally. But honestly, I would just encourage you to try, again, diffusing. When we're talking about people with autism, diffusion is a very powerful way to work with them in, in the room. It's not a, a, the lightest way. Diffusion, um, inhaling an oil is actually very, very powerful. You should be grabbing onto that on a regular basis. So next we're kind of going to go into some flowers. In the same way that we were talking about trees and roots and herbs for cleansing and how they kind of function as a plant, think of a flower. A flower, what does it do when the sun comes out? It opens up and it becomes available to uh, the world. It wants to, it's going to interact with others. It's going to feel confident and safe. And so flowers can actually assist with that. Lavender is a well-known oil for people who want to relax. So you can relax when you feel safe. If you have autism, a lot of times 
we don't know what they're thinking. And of course, there's many variations of autism and how, how a person perceives things. But the bottom line is if they can feel safe, then they will be able to um, communicate effect more effectively. They'll be able to get things done that they need to. They'll be able to manage what's going on in their day. And so oils like frankincense go great with lavender, cedarwood goes great with lavender, vetiver goes great with lavender. You could do some great combinations in a diffuser. You could also get it in the rollerball touch version and again just roll it on the back of their neck. You could roll it on the bottom of their feet or you could just have them inhale it straight from the bottle whether it's a 15 mil or whether it's um, the rollerball. Lavender is a great oil and it's only um, nine cents per drop wholesale price which makes it really cost effective. Another great oil is Roman chamomile. Now this one only comes in a 15 mil and the reason is because it's a little pricier so doTERRA does us a favor and keeps it in the smaller bottle so that we can afford it. It's about 53 cents a drop. You can take it aromatic, topical, and internal. You don't need to dilute it. You can use it straight. It has a very um, sweet smell. Very, It encourages peace and calmness within oneself. So if you're talking about somebody who has autism, this is going to be a great way for them to manage something that's making them uncomfortable, something that's stressing them. Again, you can use it, you could put it in a rollerball yourself. You could um, get it on the back of their, their neck or the bottom of their feet or even on their wrist if they like to maybe smell their wrist, teach them that that's a great way to, to carry it around with them. You could put it on lava beads if they, like a, if they have a, a bracelet that they like to wear um, or a necklace or something, if that's something that they can do. Um, it's really great just being diffused as well. So I encourage you to maybe consider it in some of the blends. It really actually goes great with frankincense. Great oil. Another one that is in the, um, this actually is a citrus. We're kind of getting into some citruses. Bergamot, I love this oil. It's very relaxing, very gentle. Um, it's known as the oil of self-acceptance. So again, talking about uh, autism, it's important that they are comfortable within themselves. And whether they're able to communicate to you what's going on with them or not, the chances are high that they're struggling with the way that they're interacting with others and how they're perceiving um, themselves and the other person in that situation. So oils like uh, citruses can be very uplifting to them. It will help them again feel very safe and very comfortable and kind of happy. They're, they're known for being sort of happy oils. It invites an individual to accept optimism. And so of course you can see how this is great for somebody who doesn't even have autism or maybe a sibling in the house who's struggling with their autistic uh, brother or sister and how they're managing in their own life. Putting oils like this in a diffuser or teaching your non-autism sibling to use oils like this can be very, very helpful to them as well. Great oil and you can use the aromatic, topical and internal. Another oil that people don't um, talk about too much is Melissa. Melissa is kind of an expensive oil. It is $1.35 a drop wholesale price. So um, it's kind of pricey just to be pouring into your diffuser. I highly recommend using this one topically. And um, honestly, you don't need to dilute it. You can use aromatic, topical, inter or internal. And you could put it right on the back of the neck, or you could smell it straight from the bottle. So as I'm dropping drops on my body topically, it's going to make the bottle go faster. If you're literally just inhaling it straight from the bottle, and let me just demonstrate. I really want to encourage you that this is a very powerful way to use oils. Always put your cap upside down so you don't get a ring on the table. And you want to catch that chemistry that's coming out of the bottle because it's literally just going up in the air. Literally hold your hand here, cup it over your nose and mouth, and breathe deeply three times. And I always say three times. And you wanna relax and slow yourself down. You notice I was talking really fast and now I'm slowing down. Melissa invites us to feel or to release that anything that we're holding back. So if maybe somebody who has autism is struggling with communication, this would be a great oil to have them just take three deep breaths straight from the bottle before, you, before they are able to um, 
communicate effectively. You could say, we're going to talk about something, or maybe they're frustrated, they're trying to convey something to you. This is a great oil to help them with that. I think it orders your thoughts a little bit. It just helps give you that safe, calm feeling. And then there's something about a connection of releasing things that are holding you back, and so you can start communicating. So this is really a great oil um, for autistic people. It also helps with um, holding you back from potential, not just in communication, but maybe what you might be able to accomplish in other ways. So if you have a child who is um, very young and trying just to learn some basic functioning skills as an autistic child, this might be something that you could use to help them transition into some of those things that you're trying to teach them, that you're trying to get them to grasp in some way. And please remember, be open to letting them be who they are in this situation. I'm sure you all know this. Anybody who works with autistic children knows that it's never what you think it is when you show up. You have to show up and be very open and willing to let them be who they are. And maybe taking a few good inhalations from that Melissa to help you with your potential and release what you're holding on to might be a good way for you to be available to help that autistic child. So make sure you're using it as the caregiver as well. Okay, wild orange. Wild orange is an excellent oil. It's very inexpensive. It's one of the least expensive oils we have at four cents a drop. And it's known as the happy oil. It's very uplifting. It helps us to work through and fosters creativity. So this is a great opportunity when maybe you have your artistic child who's learning to uh, function through drawing or um, working with blocks or even just playing with other children. Maybe just um, working at, like a little girl working at, the play stove and um, learning that she actually can use those pots and pans to pretend like she's cooking, which may not make sense to an autistic child like it does in a regular child. So this can help to foster creativity. And, and it's great also when you're diffusing that and children are playing together and it actually will help them get along better. There's something magical about this that just makes everybody happy and that's why we call it the happy oil, very great oil. Um, the last one that is, um, actually I went out of order a little bit, sorry, Ylang Ylang is a flower. So here, this one is very calming. It helps with frustration and anger management. This is going to be a big one for autistic children who are getting frustrated and are venting or um, being physical in some way because they don't know how to communicate what they need or they're just not transitioning well. So I love that word transitioning when we're dealing with autistic children. It's 15 cents a drop. So I would call this a mid-range, low to mid-range oil price-wise. You can use aromatic, topical, internal. It's great in blends. Matter of fact, it works really good with wild orange. So if you put this together with wild orange, they're going to feel very uplifted and safe. It helps release um, emotions of trauma or emotions that are bottled up. It really encourages a playful nature. So if you did like just two drops of wild orange and two drops of ylang ylang in a diffuser during playtime, especially where there are siblings involved or you're trying to integrate that autistic child into other groups, this is a great diffuser blend. You can also use it topically. Maybe just put those two in a roller ball and you can um, put them on the back of their neck. That's a great thing too. Okay, the last two things we're gonna talk about are these two great blends by doTERRA. And this one is one of my favorites, Balance. Balance is actually um, a blend of, uh, it, it's a grounding blend. It has oils like frankincense and uh, sandalwood in it. And it's really, it's got this soft energy that's excellent for calming overactive behavior. Doesn't that sound like something you need probably for an, somebody who has autism, especially an autistic child? Let's say though, if you're an autistic adult, and your mind is just racing and your words are starting to get kind of out of control and you're trying to communicate and people are always like, hey, you need to calm down a little bit. You know, you might be in your, you're actually can be pretty high functioning, but you know you have these pressures where you start to feel like I have to get in there. I have to like, I have to make myself known. I have to explain and I don't know what I'm saying and whatever it is that's running through your mind at the moment, just grab your balance and it will help order your thoughts, it will help you relax a little bit, it will help ground you. It will help you focus on what it is that, you, that you're that you trying to communicate. An overactive mind is perfect for that. It's great for transi transitions 
of quiet time into bed. So like before, maybe with an autistic child who um, is just struggling with that bedtime, and by the way, obviously, non-autistic children were, are gonna have this struggle as well, where you just say, okay, let's put on our balance um, before we go get in our pajamas. It can almost be part of the routine of getting into the pajamas. Just say first balance, then pajamas. And then we can go pick something like uh, ylang ylang and vetiver and lavender, and you can have the children help you put um, maybe one to two drops of that in the diffuser and get a blend going that will help them relax as well. That's a great routine for the evening. So balance is an excellent oil for that. You cannot ingest it. And then the last one that I really want to just talk about is Serenity. Serenity is this really amazing oil that helps you with restful sleep. It's well known for that. It's literally called the restful, restful Blend. It's very calming and soothing, not only to help you with that restful sleep, but just in times of high stress. So it's, it's not um, a sleeping pill. It's not going to knock you out. So you can actually take it in a situation where you might be like in traffic driving or um, you might be going into a party or going over to a person's house that's stressful or a stressful moment at work. If you just inhale it straight from the bottle three times or put a drop on the back of your neck, it can really help you just transition through that stressful time. It's not gonna put you to sleep. Now when you want restful sleep, it helps quiet your mind, it helps you feel safe and calm so that you can get to sleep and then get into a deep restful sleep. Another thing that we use is the Serenity Soft Gel. So if you have somebody who, with autism, that's old enough that they can actually sw swallow a soft gel, I highly recommend these. I actually use these personally, and I find that when I take them um, before I go to sleep, maybe about five to 15 minutes before I go to sleep, I actually wake up feeling much more refreshed. Um, I don't have those problems where I was waking up all night long, or even if I wake up once to go to the bathroom or something that's reasonable, you still, you get into these deep, this deep sleep where you get that restful sleep that's important. So I highly recommend those if you um, are able to swallow pills. If not, that's okay. You can actually put this in the diffuser or you can put it on the back of their neck. Some people like to spray lavender and serenity on their pillow and on their linens. It'll stay for a long time that way. Personally, I like to get it on me, maybe even on your chest, so that it's your, you make your own diffuser. And I, I'm a side sleeper, so I kind of sleep on my hand, so I'll put an oil literally on my wrist, and then while I'm sleeping, I'm kind of inhaling off of my wrist all night. So those are 14 great oils that you can use for autism. Um, I'm sure that you can see that they're not just for uh, people with autism. They're actually f can be for the mother and the father who are stressing about how to, how to be the best parents for their autistic child. Um, for parents who are struggling with, how do I give my attention to my sibling in a way that makes them feel like it's not all about the autistic child? It can be great for the sibling who's struggling with wanting to not be a bad person and think, hey, I need my time too. I need to be able to function too. I need mom and dad sometimes too. Um, and they have to work through some of those things. And things can be stressful in, in a, an autistic home where there's a lot of possible um, uh, loud voices or emotional strain. And so just get your essential oils out, put them in the diffuser. You can't go wrong. There's so many more besides the ones that we talked about here today, but I highly recommend that you start with any number of these. Just think about your finances. Think about what you can afford. Think about the price per drop and uh, just go for it. And uh, I hope you enjoy these oils and, and get a good night's sleep tonight.